नमस्कार वेलकम टू द सेकंड एपिसोड ऑफ द आर्ट ऑफ मेकिंग ट्रूथ रवीना टुडे आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ ट्रेडिशनल रूथ रवीना एंड अ डागर स्टाइल रूथ रवीना बिकॉज लेटर ऑन व्हेन आई टॉक अबाउट ऑल द मेकिंग पार्ट्स इफ यू डोंट नो व्हाट आर द डिफरेंसेस इट माइट बी अ लिटिल बिट कन्फ्यूजिंग एंड यू माइट नॉट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट so today i'm dedicating an entire episode about the differences between this dagger style and the traditional style uh now many of you might be wondering who am i i'm a rudravina player how can i know so much about rudravina making so to answer that i'll have to go back in my past the first veena that i got was a traditional style and i wanted to place my veena on my shoulder and play it like that but the very first time when i sat in front of my guru vidushi mitana she said madhuvanti place your veena on your lap you will be far more comfortable and playing will be so much more easier so i started with playing the traditional style rudra veena and as that veena was not so good i had to make my veena and uh, to make my first veena i went to udaipur to pandit raj shekhar vyas there i made my very first veena of bamboo uh, and that is where i learned all about veena making everything that he taught me he told me uh, helped me in my way making my own veenas and also there has been a huge part of bala chandra pandit bala chandra who recreated veena as chandra veena i used to learn from him long back so in my journey any time when i'm confused or i don't know what to do he has always been there to help me and to guide me as he has been experimenting with veena for his entire life almost he knows so many things better than so many others so there were places where i got literally stuck and he just told me are this is such a very simple thing just do it like this and it will be done so these are the three people who played a very crucial part in my veena making and there has been some other names that i need to uh consider is chris dodridge his veena inspired me a lot then shonod babu my veena maker from uluberia who helped me so much in my making part when i made my very first veena in udaipur i made it all on my own then on my second veena me and shonod babu both of us worked equally and uh, it was very nice of him he was probably one of the very uh, first veena makers of our time who was eager or willing to listen to the instrument players needs and their ideas and he worked accordingly so that's how my second veena was made and on my third veena i could give so many things i could leave so many things on shonod babu and i knew as he was there he saw how i want my things to be done and how i work how i want my works to be done he knew my preferences my choices and i left so many things on shonod babu on and on my third veena i didn't really have to work so much most of the works were done by shonod babu thank you now we'll switch to first the traditional style rudra veena i'll talk about how that was played and some of its parts and then we'll talk about dagger style rudra veena and then in the end i'll talk about what i have done on my rudra veena thank you keep watching so this is a traditional style rudra veena if you look at it technically it's same as any other veena it has this dandi this peacock and the tumbas but at the same time there are a few differences like on a traditional rudra veena you will never have the sharab on this side rather the dandi itself will continue till here and then you will have a lotus or something to block this area traditionally long back 
this veena dandi used to be made out of bamboo later on in previous century uh, we started making even traditional veenas with wood and uh, usually tune or teak were used but the peacock used to always be more or less made out of uh, wood and now traditional peacocks used to be quite smaller and these peacock areas only work was it has to, had to be the bridge holder and apart from that the inside of the peacock used to be more or less blocked there didn't used to be so much of hollow and from the peacock the al we call it the area what goes inside the dandy to you know uh, to connect the dandy with the peacock there didn't used to be so much of uh, empty space it used to be almost blocked so as a result this veena didn't used to have a very long sustain and the volume also wasn't that good and at the same time this veena was usually tuned in a much lower scale than how we tune our veena nowadays and then if you look at it there are four playing strings one larage and only two chikaris and the chikaris are placed on the dandi not on this side and the tumbas are also usually smaller than what we use on daga style veenas so this is the structural difference uh, between daga style and traditional style veena now this veena was not played on the lap like this rather it was put on the shoulder like this and then people used to sit i traditionally if you are playing a traditional rudra veena you have to sit in bajrasana but for many reasons many people can't sit on bajrasana so many people sit in padmasana or sukhasana and for me i sit like this it's kind of like a gomukhasana or it's almost like how a sitar player would sit and but apart from that most of the playing styles were same the thumb placement on a daga style veena the thumb is the hand sits like this but on this veena the thumb rather goes inside the dandi or behind the dandi and it's played like this and the laraj on dagger veena we play like this but here the laraj is played with the pinky or the small finger and apart from that all the other things are more or less same as uh, dagger style veena the only thing is this veena is much more smaller and the dandi also is much more thinner the small overall size is much smaller than a dagger veena and the tumbas so basically it's overall everything is much smaller we don't have the sharab here and instead of three chikaris and like dagger veena we have two chikaris now we'll switch on to dagger veena as you can now see this veena compared to the traditional one is so much more bigger this is a dagger style veena and there are eight pegs on the sharab and in the on this side on a traditional veena we didn't have this dragon head or sharab and the peacock is also much bigger the tumbas are much bigger and the dandi it's also a little bit more wider apart from that obviously there are playing style differences and here we have three chikaris four playing string one laraj laraj is played like this chikari like this and it's kept on the lap so it's much more convenient for the instrumentalist to sit like this and play apart from that this peak of area when bade ustad zia mahyuddin dagar uh, created this style veena what he did was he emptied some of the space inside the peak of as a result this veena's volume and sustain it was much better than a traditional veena and he could put thicker strings and tune it a little bit more higher uh, to a higher pitch 
and obviously the tumbas are a little bit bigger so it also added up to the overall sound and sustain and everything and it has a much deeper much fuller rounder tone and uh, it's uh, good to play it's really good to play now we'll switch to what we have done on my veena so now on the third part i'll talk about what i have done rather i haven't done anything it's all the blessings of my gurus and also a lot of help from shonadhu so this is my second veena that i had met after coming back to kolkata uh, rather me and shonadhu who we had met you can see uh, after what bari ustad had done on his veena i knew that to increase the sound and to increase the resonance and sustain and everything the key has to be in the dandy and in the pickup so i wanted to go a little bit extreme so i made this dandy and pickup the pickup is obviously huge it's so much bigger than any dagger selvina and also the dandy is also much uh, bigger than a dagger selvina even and the tumbas are of more or less the same size as dagger selvina what i changed uh, was i got really inspired from chris dodridge uh, about the fretting system on dagger style and traditional style veena we have individual frets cut individually and set individually they used to be set by wax on traditional veena and dagger style veena the frets were tied but all the frets were uh, different uh, and separately cut but that had a setback that was on those frets as everything is handmade all the frets can't be exactly even and if there is slightly a little bit of difference between two or three frets there will be problems when we play there will be some unwanted noise or strings bouncing back or set of other problems so on saraswati veena this fret system was there they started using this fretting system long back chris dodridge on his rudra veena used this kind of fretting system where we put two patties and then we place the frets and tie them and also when i was learning from balaji i saw that on every of his veena every one of his veena the same fretting system was there but back then i was not so much into making a veena so i didn't ask balaji what were the secrets of this potties or this fret stands so when i made this veena i just used some frame and put the frets on that and that time i had no idea that what should be the ratio of this fret wide and the diameter of the dandy so at the end result this veena looked huge so after that balaji i asked balaji how to make it better and then he gave me all the secrets like this fret wide and the wide of this dandy has to be similar and this fret uh, this fret system instead of putting just a frame why don't we use proper potti that potti is a system what is used on sitar surbahar saraswati veena most of these instruments which are basically two wooden chips placed on both the sides and then they are rounded and you know merged into the dandy so then i made this veena using all those things that balaji had told me and then obviously that uh, fretting system now if you look at the size it's obviously bigger than a traditional style veena but it's smaller than a dagger style veena and on this veena i didn't keep the sharp part because that time i wasn't sure if i want it or not but then i fig- uh, i got to know that if a veena is three piece if there is a sharp the veena will be a little bit more stable a little bit more stronger so on this veena i put the sharp 
and the shrub is just a little bit uh, shorter than a Douglas style vena and then on Douglas style vena after the sh in the shrub joint is a little bit after the dandy which I have not kept rather I after the ara after my ara I just kept one inch and put my shrub where on Douglas style vena it's usually four to five inches space is kept kept after the ara which adds up uh, some more length to the vena but on the contrary uh, my peacock is almost like Douglas style vena but my peacock still is bigger than a Douglas style vena and uh, the difference is inside the peacock that we'll talk about later when we talk about the dandy and Dandy's parts, Sharab and Peacock. Then I'll go into the details about the inside of the Peacock. Apart from that, the Tumbas are obviously bigger than traditional and smaller than a Daga style. Rather, uh, if you look at it like that way, this Veena that I play is a hybrid between the two. Uh, but when you look at it, it almost looks like a Daga style vena and also I play it like a Daga style vena keeping it on my lap. So I get a much more better command over the instrument and it's much more easier to play like this and I get the best results I guess uh, when I play it like this but at the same time I can keep it on my shoulder if I want to but I just don't do that. Thank you.